In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace the transmission fluid temperature sensor on this Ford F450. Let's get started. To begin, we have to drain the transmission oil pan so that we don't make a mess everywhere. So use a 13 millimeter or half inch socket on the drain plug. Break it free and remove it. Not sure why it's so tight in there. There we go. Make sure you have a collection bucket to catch the fluid. When you drain it, it's always a good idea to inspect it. This one looks like it's in pretty good shape. It's not brand new, but it's not old if you see it black, burnt, or anything gray, dark in color, basically. That's not good. Now that it's done draining, it's still dripping, but that's all right. We can cap this off now, install the drain plug. I'm gonna wipe it off in there before I uh, bottom it out all the way. And the torque for this is 159 inch pounds. That also converts to 13.3 foot pounds. That's bottomed out and that's tightened. The reason I'm torquing this now is so that I don't have to come back later when I install the pan, it's ready to go. Now remove all the 13 millimeter bolts that hold this pan onto the transmission. I'm at the last bolt now, but I'm gonna put this one in, which is on the opposite side, just so it can hold the oil pan in place, or the transmission pan. That way, as I remove that last one, as you can see, it's already broken free, so it can't fall off. It'll stay here, and I can safely remove that bolt, and when I'm ready, I can unthread that one by hand. Okay, still have to support it on this side, of course, but Keep in mind, there is still fluid in there, just a little bit. Take this last one out. Lower the pan. And now, drain the rest of it. Remove the rest of the gasket. Discard it, don't reuse the gasket. Now remove the filter. All you have to do is just wiggle it. Watch out, because fluid will come out. There's always more fluid in the oil pan, so make sure you drain the rest of it. This right here on the passenger side of the filter is your temperature sensor. Twist it counterclockwise. There we go. Might be a little difficult at first. Then you can slide it straight out. There we go. To unplug the connector, there's a little tab right here. If you pry it away, with a pocket screwdriver, be gentle because these wires are very thin. You don't want to break anything. Pull the, uh, pull the connector away. And there we go. Throw out your old sensor. Take the new one. Plug it in. Make sure this little notch is facing the locking tab so it can actually lock in. And now, put it right back into where the original one came from. You want to slide it up and twist it clockwise to lock it in. Make sure it doesn't come out. It's normal if it wiggles a little bit. The O-ring that you saw on it is going to do the sealing. So as long as it's connected and locked in, you're good to go. At this point, we want to clean off the surface where the transmission pan gasket mounts. So just go around and wipe it off. I won't degrease it yet because most likely fluid will still leak on it. So, but I'm at least gonna wipe it off. I'm gonna leave the uh, degreasing to the end where I use brake parts cleaner on a rag to uh, make it nice and dry right before installation so the new gasket has a good surface to seal on. If you have a lot of corrosion built up, try to scrape it off with a razor blade nice and flat. Mine's not too bad, so I'm gonna leave it. Let's move on to cleaning the transmission pan. Here's the transmission oil pan, and the first thing I wanna do is, if you look right here by the drain plug, there's a magnet, take a rag, and wipe off all of this debris. Or it's really metal, fine metal dust that settles on this magnet. And this, this is normal, especially on a transmission that works hard. This is not concerning. 
What is concerning is if you see a lot of it in the fluid, on the magnet, everywhere else, or chunks. Obviously, that's not good. This is normal, like I said, so once I wipe this off the best I can, doesn't have to be perfect, I'm going to go around the edge here, and I have some rust buildup. It kind of built up a ridge, almost. I want to sand this flat so that the new gasket has a flat surface to seal up on all the way to the edge if it needs to, especially right around the bolt holes here. I don't want a transmission of fluid leak. So you can do this multiple different ways. If yours isn't too bad, well, maybe you don't have to do anything. I'm going to use a wire wheel and a drill and just gently grind this off with the wire wheel until it's flat. This is what it looks like after I cleaned it. It's nice and flat. I know it doesn't look perfect. It never will. It is rusty, but it's flat and it has a good surface where the gasket can seal up. You want to use some brake parts cleaner on a rag and make sure that you have a nice clean surface to work with because whether you're using a pre-made rubber gasket or not, I'm going to use gasket maker. You do want a dry clean surface. Having said that, I'm going to lay a bead all the way around. Now you want to lay a thin bead of RTV right in the middle and go all the way around. Go around the inside of the bolt holes. Try to do a continuous bead. Now that I've gone around the entire perimeter, I'm actually going to go on the outside of every bolt hole. That way there is some silicone surrounding the whole thing. I don't want any leaks here. You can adjust it slightly with the uh, gloved finger if necessary. Okay, everything's covered. Let's go back to the, uh, to the truck and put it on the transmission. Now back on the vehicle, let's clean around where the transmission pan mounts. Use brake parts cleaner on a rag. Just wipe it to remove all oil and contaminants. Go all the way around. Once you're sure everything is oil free, have some bolts ready. And let's put the transmission pan back up. As soon as this goes up, I want to secure it with a couple bolts around whatever lines up first so it can at least stay in place. This will allow you to put in the rest of them. Try to bottom at least one of them out. I'll do this one also. Now let's put all the rest of the bolts in and then we'll come back, tighten them and do the final torque. Let's bottom all of these out and then we'll come back and torque them. The torque is not very high, so when you bottom them out, be gentle. The torque for all of these is 177 inch pounds, not foot pounds. That converts to 14.7 foot pounds. I'm just gonna go around in a circle and I'm actually gonna go twice. That way I make sure everything is properly tightened. Now I torqued everything, I went around twice, everything is tight, and we actually let this oil pan sit overnight so the RTV can harden. That is the best way to do it. If you have to put fluid in right away, go for it. But the ideal situation is if you could just let it dry overnight before you add oil to it. So having said that, with everything done down here, let's go up and fill it up with transmission fluid. Now up top in the engine bay, course with the hood open right next to your air filter housing on the passenger side you'll see the oil dipstick but this is for the transmission fluid not for the engine oil it actually says trans fluid right on it so you can't miss it pull it up and out remove it completely because this is where we're going to fill the transmission if you have a narrow pointy funnel like this that would be perfect because you can stick it right down into the dipstick tube and this is how we're going to fill it once you take the pan out and dispose of all the fluid in the pan and the filter. 
it takes seven and a half quarts to fill it all the way back up. Of course, we will have to check it with a dipstick when we're done to make sure that it actually took seven and a half quarts to be properly filled, but that's what you're gonna aim for. So, use manufacturer specified automatic transmission fluid and put seven and a half quarts in. Now you can remove your funnel. Watch out because a lot of times it'll still be dripping at the bottom. And now we actually have to run the engine so we can check the transmission fluid properly. I'm not going to actually run it right now. I'm indoors, but basically what you're aiming for is with it running, you want to hopefully, if you can warm it up, but if you can't, there should be a cold fill and a hot fill in this. This is the cold fill, which is lower. The hot fill is a little bit higher because the fluid warms up and expands. But what you're aiming for is that the proper fill level should be right in between the hash marks here. So with it running in park on a flat level surface, hopefully warmed up, you should have your fluid level anywhere here. If it's too high, you overfilled it and you need to drain. If it's just a smidge too high, like a millimeter above, it's fine, leave it. But if it's way up above, drain some. Of course, if it's too low, you're gonna wanna add more. Usually between the low and the high is about a quart. So keep that in mind and estimate accordingly. I would also recommend waiting about five to 10 minutes after you fill it because the dipstick tube is gonna be covered in transmission fluid. So as soon as you dip this down in, it's just gonna get smudged with transmission fluid and you're gonna get a false reading or an inaccurate reading. So wait five, 10 minutes, run the truck, drive it around if you can, run it through all the gears so that all the solenoids get filled up with fluid and then check it. And like I said, you're aiming to be within the hash marks. After you're done, put the dipstick back in, take it for a test drive. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.